Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to our Pinhole Quilting Showroom. It's, um, it's actually feeling a lot more spring-like than it did last week. Um, and uh, I think a lot of people will have been going out in the garden in the last couple of days. So whatever you've been doing, I hope you've had a good week and a, a quilting week. We met up with some people on Wednesday night and it was lovely to pe see people there. Um, and there's nothing we like better than to meet some of our customers. So I'm delighted to say that as a special for this week only, uh, we have one of our local customers, Sharon. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so I absolutely, um, I don't know, sidestepped you into doing this, didn't I? I only came to buy some thread. So yes, yeah, so this is what happens. If you say that you'd like to come and buy some thread and it's a Friday afternoon that you're suggesting it, before you know it, you might be on Facebook Live. But it's nothing to worry about because we're going to talk about all the things that you know lots about, which is about quilts and quilting. So you're going to be slowly. <laughs> on home ground, on home ground. Um, what we'll do is we'll have a chat. And then actually one of the things that Sharon does is she does quite a lot of edge to edge quilting. So we want to run through on one of the, the machines. So if you've never done pantographs or edge to edge using the quilting from the back, or you don't know what that is, then definitely keep watching because we'll give you a live demonstration of that as well. But let's talk first of all about you. Me. and quilting about you and quilting so tell me first of all let's just go through how you got into quilting in the first place patchwork and quilting in the first place just briefly and then how you got into long arm quilting i started sewing patchwork and quilting about 20 years ago okay and it was a lifesaver right to the truth of it my yeah we tragically lost my son ah yes and I needed to learn something new. So yes. I started doing patchwork and quilting and never looked back. No. I met amazing friends through it. That's wonderful. And my skills got better and better. I met you. Yes. And first of all, I had a little Janome machine that you could plug the USB in and it did the most amazing quilting. I thought I was a business. <laughs> <laughs> and now I am doing that. Absolutely. Free, free, motion, so. free motion quilting. And we got some, you brought in two quilts. Yeah. One of them was only brought in to do color matching for the, the threads, but actually we're going to show it in a moment. And when we go through this as well. So, you, so yes, I think, I mean, your story is not untypical insofar as for a lot of people, it is therapy. You know, I find that from talking Angela to people. Has got yeah, it right. she has. My Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Angela's one of your heroes as well, heroines, isn't she? You love her. And you've met her. I you met her last year yeah. at Festival of Quilts, which was brilliant. And uh, I've got some lovely pictures of you with Angela. So, okay. Yes. Um, so after that, um, and you'd got into doing the patchwork and quilting, but then you started to see that there were long arm quilts, yeah. quilting machines available. So just tell me about a little bit about oh, that. Years ago, I remember your dad at the show, and I could yes. go and have a little play and thought it was very grown up and very exciting. I knew I'd never, ever, ever be able to have one. So You I, thought you'd never, ever, ever. It was my dream. Yes. Actually. So the dream came true and I had the sit down. Yeah. What, the faff. The faff. Love that. Which was made by Handy Quilter for faff. A uh, 16 inch sit down and it's got that lovely extended throat space so suddenly you've got free motion quilting yeah. and you really got on well with that. Loved it, loved it, loved it but it had its limitations. Yes. So then what happened then? Oh my husband said I was putting on weight and I needed to stand up at the machine, <laughs> walk around a bit because I was getting fat sitting there as a blob. So, yeah. so James is really so really the instigator of this said, as a weight loss routine. Absolutely. Okay. So I said do you realize how much this costs James? He said you've got to lose weight Sharon. So he said phone up Liz straight away. Right. That's when I phoned you up that you morning. You did? Off, over we came. Yes. And it yeah. arrived about two weeks later. No, it's fantastic. Yes. So you, you managed to shoehorn it in. Actually, you created the space from what you, was the room that you used My to do all your stitching. Room. Your stitch and bitch room yeah. was converted into the long arm quilting room. So you went for the Amara yeah. and you did the quilting from the back kit so that you could do pantographs and build up your confidence, really. The Amara, there's no way in a million years I could do free motion. It was just... No. Going from a sit down to long arm is actually quite difficult. Yes, so I, found it quite difficult. I, I, I think that's typical. It is. So pantographs were, you could actually do a quilt that looked like a grown up quilt. Yes. And it was fine. So <laughs> I did loads of pantographs. Also, yeah. you have to practice. There's no way you can just do it. So no. I was quilting for quilts of care leavers. Yes. And do, I'm still quilting for them. So I do lots of quilts for them. And, yeah. and that's just practice, 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 practice. Yes. Yeah. All different colours, all different shapes. and. 
then from then you can go on and do your free motion stuff. Yeah. And so, I mean, if you were going to give any advice to somebody who's recently had a long arm quilting machine, would you say, yeah, do charity quilts because it gives quilt you, charity, yeah, yeah, quilt for charity. You can practice yeah. And practice and practice. Also, the, there is a, um, you don't have the emotional attachment to the quilt itself. You're just looking at it from the point of enhancing it and getting it quilted, aren't you? So it's, it's slightly different to what you might but do for your own you're quilt. Giving back as well. Yeah. Learning a skill, you've got a skill. A lot of us have retired now. Mm -hmm. So to be able to do something and you stand and look at it, you think, oh, well, I'm really chuffed for that. Yeah. That was just a bit of a, pillowcase or whatever you throw them together yeah. and then you quilted it to death and it looks stunning then you give it to somebody who loves it yes what could make you feel that more better than that like see bad it, english <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> apart, apart from the grammar um but it ticks so many boxes doesn't it because you're getting something out of it somebody else is getting something out of it you're recycling and repurposing materials yeah. And you're creating something that has, there is an element of creativity and use of colour that also is kind of enhancing both for you as the creator and for the person who's getting it. So it just, t it's on so many it levels. All the boxes. It does. I, I probably quilt, I would say well over 100 quilts a year. Wow. Well, I've been to your house when they've been stacked up, should, ready to distribute. So we sh should we talk a little bit about, talk about a little bit about the charities that you've quilted for and what you've worked on? Because there's a few different ones okay. that you've done there as so well. The quilting, I do, I'm doing um, a lot for quilts of care leaders. There yes. are youngsters who leave care. Yeah. And the quilts get sent to me with the bindings. I quilt them, mm -hmm. put them on the pile. Yeah. and then they get collected. Yes. So that's one aspect. And they get distributed at the Christmas dinners. Christmas dinners. So and once a year. No more, but now we're doing it. Oh yeah, that's right. So many people doing it, we're doing it throughout the year yeah. for the youngsters who need it. Yes, so great. that was people who were in care but joined university. Yeah. And I think that, that looked amazing. Yeah. Um, just having that kind of support. It's fantastic. It is amazing, isn't it? Because you don't realize, I mean, you know, when I went to college, I had my parents to help me settle in. Mm. You don't have that they if have you've come do. from care. They've come from so care. So how Good hard? Care or bad care or yeah. foster care. They yes. Have, a lot of them have absolutely nothing. No. And they can choose which court they want. Yeah. That's, that's brilliant. But we call them hugs. They're yeah. very long. They're about, I think, anything up to 75 inches. Yes. And minimum 40, 42 inches. Right. So they're long and thin. Yes. So they can wrap, wrap them around. around. It's wonderful. The concept of it is fantastic. It and the fact that it's been sort of taken up by so many people and em literally embraced by yeah. so many people is wonderful. So, um, yeah, I mean, so Quilts for Care Leavers is one of those charities. Yes. So and then you've got some others, I've I think. Had some, well, I have a team of girls who we, we sew together. Um, yeah. We wanted to do different sizes and different colours. So mm -hmm. I looked around the local area to see who needs what. Yeah. So we, the group that um, I belong to, we set up a, a sewing machine library. Yes. So we take the machines to the refugee ladies. Yes, we teach which I came to, to you came, yes. in, in January right. and it was amazing. We teach them to sew. Yeah. We, we ask them to bring their, their clothes, their hems, zips, yeah. anything they need repairing. Yeah. And we didn't do it for them, but we, we actually taught them how to repair yeah. their clothes. This is an absolute classic, isn't it? Because it's the, the sort of, you know, give a man a fish he can eat for a day, yeah. give a man a fishing rod he can eat, exactly. he can, yeah, for, and then teach him how to yeah. make a fishing rod so and he can the quilt, ladies, you know. If you remember this, yeah. they'd never threaded a needle. No. Can you imagine in this day and age that yeah. they came from, I don't know, the jungles and, you know, middle of Africa somewhere, the they're trafficked, their yes. stories are horrendous. They yes. never had any, any, half the technology or... No, or, or the resources. resources that we've got. No. I think, I mean, the thing that I remember most about that was just the joy that I was working with one lady called yeah. Margaret, who she'd never, ever used a sewing so machine she, before, and just the enthusiasm and the happiness on her face. Yeah. It was, it, you can't make up how, how much, how good that makes you feel. And you know, you've given somebody a life skill. And it's fantastic. And they're sewing machines. Yes. At the moment, I've got six sewing machines at home. Yes. And they're ready to hopefully go to the ladies in Evesham. Um, it's like parachuting in yeah. sewing machines yeah. to, so this is to the ladies in Evesham who are? So I've set up a group in Selly Oaks, the yeah. ladies. Now we're, we're hoping to set up the local group in Evesham. Fantastic. For the refugee ladies. For the refugee ladies and there. And we also did, we, we did 
teaching the girls how to make a, um, a crop top. Yes. And hand sewing, you did just the typical little hexagons. Yes. And then they can embroider those. I've got threads to take. To so they can do it at home and continue doing it. Which is it's just brilliant, isn't it? Because, you know, people have, potentially they have got time on their hands. Yeah. But, and then when they bring it together, it's all part of being a group. It could and give them a job as well. It could they do. They sew. Yes. They can either work from home or work yeah. for somebody sewing. Absolutely. No, that's brilliant. Well, should we talk about the quilt that you've done here? Just tell me where all these parts of this quilt came from. Let's just let's just show it first of all. If we hold it up, Pete will check it's in in the shot. Okay. So there we go. So people can see this. Now, if we sit down and we can talk about the different bits of it. Well, about a year ago, I think it was a year ago, I you sent out a plea for your lovely ladies I did. for orphan blocks. Yes. Um, so the orphan blocks arrived, and I'm pretty sure this was... Was one of them Liz from... Hawkins. She's got two names. She has got... Yeah, the Marshman. Marshman. And I'm pretty sure yeah. that's one of hers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's, she does a lot of things. I then it? put... I had it on the wall, but what am I going to do with that? What colours? So, and then somebody else sent me a few of the few of these. I can't mm -hmm. remember who did. So, so these were orphan blocks. I just had it on the wall, and I just put it together. This is a pillowcase, mm -hmm. but it's the perfect colour. Yes. And then I like now I really like the difference of whites and slightly cream. Yeah. So it sort of gives it a, and then you can see the white and white. It's really interesting because it's that kind of subtlety because you've got these different shades yeah. of and neutrals. I've done that a couple of years ago. I've had to have white yeah. and white and cream on cream. That yeah. the same, whereas now it gives it a I really like it. Example of actually by doing practice by doing, you learn more about colour Absolutely. and about what goes together. Yeah. And another example from what I can see of your progress as well <laughs> is, is the variety of designs that you've introduced. I mean, I know that you followed Angela Walters' Midnight Quilter yeah. and you did a lot of her That's exercises. <laughs> Absolutely. Which is kind of why it made me think of it as well. But, you know, it's so effective. Um, and, you know, you've got really your, work. yeah, this is really work. And we've got lovely ribbon candy. Andy's here, again Angela, really effective to create a just, dynamic quilting pattern. A lot of Angela, and she says choose two patterns and just do two. Look at how your feathers have come I'm on. Getting better at You're getting, feathers. honestly, feathers, yeah. it's amazing, but absolutely this, amazing. I'm disappointed in. Why? Well, I used the open toe first of all. Right. Then I went, just messy, I've got to do perhaps that needs more. Practice. Okay. To, so to get. I'm quite handed that. Ah. We, we always know the bits that we can improve on, but yeah. what, what you always say is it's the overall impression of the quilt, and, and you're delighted with it, and for but good this reason. this unquilted looks a rag on the wall. Yes. Quilted, yeah. it just transforms. It does, it and does. some lovely lady is going to, it's going to get that. And then the back is just a sheet from the charity shop. Yes. So charity shops in the Persia and Worcester area are often raided by you, aren't they? All the time. Softer, <laughs> softer sheets are better. Yes. The ones with the... What do you call it? The um, thread thread count. The thread count. It's a high thread count, but it's all tight together. Yes, it is. That often pulls. The one I got yeah. from is purple, and it's pulling the white yeah. through, which is really annoying. You see, I mean, typical patchwork and quilting fabric will be uh, seventy-two by seventy-two count, yeah. as opposed to three hundred of Egyptian cotton beautiful bed sheets, yeah. but they're not beautiful for quilting. Whereas if it's a little bit worn and old. Yeah, it feels perfect. nice. <laughs> it feels nice. Yes, that's right. Been washed many times. Right, let's have a look at the other one. The other one. Yeah, I'll put this over here. Pete's going to help us get the other one, hopefully. Right, let's show this first. Right, right way up. Is, um, which is the right way up. You tell my bars that way. Yes. Yeah, otherwise the flowers will fall out. So this is absolutely amazing. And we're going to tell you a little bit more about that. Well, Sharon's explained it to me already today. And you came in looking for thread for this. Um, Did you? No, it's thread for the one. Oh, thread for the thread other one. Oh, OK. Great. So let's just talk a little bit about this quilt. Let's sit down again and Pete can do a close up. So tell me how this, I what your origin was. given this beautiful panel here and it's too small. So it's like, yeah. what do I do with it? So it's on the wall for like probably about a year. Under right. the walls, hadn't a clue what to do with it. So I, You've got plenty of wall space, got obviously, yeah. Space. I've got three sewing rooms. I'm just, <laughs> poor James. Poor James. <laughs> He's got his old cars. He's fine. That's true. <laughs> so I unpick the binding. Yes. Put the binding on that. 
Then I love bunny hill designs. Yes. I just love bunnies. So I put the borders on. Yeah. But I didn't know what I was doing. I just put a border on. It goes on the wall. Think about it. I wanted to put this on. So I had, what did I do first? I had. And that. you'd already done a bunny hill design, oh, which is beautiful. Yeah, I like Absolutely that. beautiful. So I did this border first, but mm -hmm. this, then the inner border was empty. So we had to put bunnies on the inside. On the inner ones. Yeah. So, I so you've got your there. bunnies eating and bunny with a bird. I've got to put the more... Um, they need their little cotton little tails, yeah, don't they? Tails, but I've actually got some little thread. You know how you make pom-poms? Yes. So, that they, so it's like texture ones. They're going to come there. That would be and lovely. And I need to sew little black eyes to get ah. the, the depth there. Yes. So the lady who did this, um, I can't remember her name. It's a sister of... Uh, of Sue. Sue. Um, it's stunning. I mean, just a bit go close Yeah, to this here. is amazing. It's it dimensional is, applique. Like it. it's um, a sort of reminiscent yeah. of, gosh, um, it was very, it was very big in the 1990s. Baltimore. Baltimore. It is a style of Baltimore. Yeah. It's absolutely Yeah. Stunning. I think it's Country Garden Baltimore. There was a book that had very, I seem to remember these designs in it it's when I was at Cotton Patch. We used to sell it. Beautiful. And this I remember as a Ginny Buyer. Um, palette design. I can recognise some of these fabrics, you see, because they're way back. So this was hand quilted. So the, in effect, this is now double quilted. So yes. I sewed the borders on and then put it back on my machine. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see, actually, is it hand quilted or sewing? Uh, she'd machine I quilted it machine, with, it? I think, i tell you what she did. I think she did walking foot straight line quilting do, yes. and she did these lines i think and then I, I those did. lines cross hatch oh that's that's what it yeah. was i should have, i've got a photograph at home yeah so then i did the orange peel and i double quilted that and yeah. i think i, I went around the edges, around the edges well, right, to right, secure right, it because i needed to secure it yeah absolutely brilliant so this is going to be another child quilt for some lovely lady but it's going to be hard to give this one away it really oh, is tell me about the corners um, corners um the lovely Jan Bathro for I can't remember what little company she has, but she does. Isn't she's these. the um, English, English, English quilter. English quilter. Yeah. I've always wanted to do them, so she taught me how to do them. And then I I padded these to give it a bit of sort of like a triplanto effect. Made a complete mess of this. So I have to do lots of little circles. <laughs> but those, that, that's the thing, isn't it? You say you made a complete mess of it. Actually, yeah. it just looks like you deliberately did little so, circles in so there, didn't. but you maybe didn't intend to initially. Um, but lovely ruler work. Your crosshatch ruler work. That, so effective. Really pleased with that. Yeah. I haven't done that before. It's like a pineapple, isn't it? It's yeah. a pineapple effect. And I'm with going the feather to do coming. the flange. Binding. The flange binding that would really, that really suit amazing. that. But then I got with to your applique. How on earth I'm going to? Oh, finishing that's going to be. Like just to oh yeah, you just have to yeah, turn it, it under. It a bit of hand it. sewing on the edges yeah. there. And well, that's the wonderful. It's all bits and pieces. Oh, Literally, yeah. it's just a duvet with about six yeah. pieces in there because that's the only fabric I had as backing that vaguely. Yes, it does, it, and it's it's sort of it's got perfect. that lovely. Yeah, yeah. it's got that. I mean, that's, that really is perfect. How funny that you've got that to those designs on there, kind but of simple applique. It, you well, I think it, but you, you know, the person loved it maybe it when they works, first got it. It's the right color, but I like absolutely, colors to match. I think that's brilliant. I love the fact that um, repurposing what would have been just a wall hanging, a wall hanging. that yeah. would have had no function, yeah. is now something that somebody will love and use on a daily but basis. We're given lots so, of these, and yeah. I've used just about every single one. Yeah, yeah. They might go up for a while and I decide what to do with them. Yeah. But I always come up with a good idea. Brilliant. Right, we haven't spoken to anybody who's watching, if there are people watching. So, Pete, has there been any questions or anything like that? No questions. Okay. People watching. Yeah. And, uh, I think first we need to say happy birthday, to Helen Mitchell. Oh, happy birthday, Helen! So Hel Helen, um, she's up in the northeast, and she recently bought Moxie XL with Pro Stitcher Light, and she's Sassanac quilting. She's called Sassanac, as in, yeah, um, Scottish term, isn't it? Um, and she's doing it as a business. Oh. So yeah, and she's yeah, she really uses a lot of repurposing sustainable quilting and i think i mean what we've seen here is is the point of it is that we have all these extra things we might have orphan blocks but you're really using them 
and putting them to good use within these charity you quilts. You go to your class, you do a block, you yeah. do half a quilt. Yeah. If you don't want it, put it away. That's right. You can't give it away because you made it. Yes. Very suddenly. I mean, I've gone through all my quilts and I've just put, as you know, so many of them on the charity path. Yeah. It's like, why am I keeping this? I yeah. don't want it anymore. I no. learned it, I loved it. I don't need it. No. Off it goes. Yeah. And it will be it'll be loved by somebody else and that's the point isn't it so anything else there apart from happy birthday to helen uh, people are loving the the quilt helen says it's a totally stunning quilt there you go you see aren't you glad you came along for some thread now <laughs> and i yeah frog marched you to the camera and in canada says it's brilliant good and margaret in north carolina says it's gorgeous how are you good gracious yes you me thinking it's just okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, well, what we'll do now is uh, we'll go over to the machine and we'll do some little pantograph quilting. We'll just go through how you set the, that up and and then that'll be it. Okay. Yeah, great. So, you okay, Pete? We're ready to... So on a 10 foot frame, where's this one of our, our sort of studio frames that we use here for training? So we've got the quilting from the back kit on the Amara, which comprises the rear handlebars and screen. And we've also got, on this one, we've actually got the groovy board stylus. So the, the laser's in a slightly different position from yours, but it does the same thing. The same yeah, and we've got just our sample drift pattern here. I have to interrupt you. Yeah. This is brilliant, Pete. This Perspex. This plastic Perspex. I'm going to have to get some of Yeah. That. I have got um, masking tape that you can take on and off, and I just literally stick it on to oh, keep it in place. Okay. This is a brilliant yeah. idea. Well, how we do it then? We have um, a pantograph at the back is a design that is normally like a continuous repeated design, but I mean, you can actually use it for blocks as well at the front. You can mount a laser light at the front. But the laser light, there's a little red light, a little bit difficult to see when we're on Facebook Live, but there's a, a little light that we use to trace the design. By tracing the design here, it then repeats on the quilt. The, straight, the solid line is used for tracing, and then the dashed line is used for alignment for the next line so that you get a consistent distance between the lines. Okay, so talk, if you could just talk through just some of the things that you've done in terms of teaching other people how to use the pantographs um, and how you would, how you would approach showing somebody who's never pantographed okay. before. Okay, I started pantographing because I couldn't do free motion, obviously. And I got almost stuck there. Yeah, it's on the edge. Let me just get that under. There we go. I always start on the left-hand side. Okay. Position, position the needle. Yeah. And then you've got the laser light. So I, I talked to um, one of the girls uh, about a couple of weeks to get, ago. So what I did, I went round, I said, watch me do the pattern. So I, I'm going the wrong way, actually. Make sure you go the right way. So follow the pattern round. So you do it quite slowly when you're learning. But you yeah. get, you'll get faster and faster as you go along. And I haven't done this pattern before, so... I can now just get on my machine and do any pantograph pattern without practicing. You're very accurate. Your hand-eye coordination is really good, but I mean, how many, with those number of quilts? <laughs> how many have I done? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So... But when I was learning, there was no way I could do this. I just, I do three or four practice rows before yes. I even went on a quilt. Yes. So when I was teaching Pat, I went along and got to just watch what I was doing. Okay. And then I did that twice. And then as I was doing, I was, I met the second time, I said, get your finger out. Great, one yeah. your finger. And when I'm doing the laser light, you go with your finger, just yeah. so you're practicing or even go like... It's almost like a rhythm to it as you've well. You've got to get the that? rhythm. If you've got it in your head, yes. you can then do it. Yes. Um, and then I, then I got to do the laser light yeah. a couple of times. Yeah. And then she went on the quilt. But right. she actually only came up to um, do the long tack stitches on, and then go away and quilt it with her domestic machine. Right. I had no intention of that. So it's a bit like you coming on to look for thread and finding this under your on Facebook Live. Precisely. So you do it to other people too. I didn't, I didn't realise that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so she quilted the whole of her quilt. Yes. And I took videos. That's and wonderful. she loved it. She absolutely loved it. That's great. Because, yeah, because Pat hadn't had much experience of quilting, had she? So none, none at, at all. all. No. Absolutely. No. She was How did you meet Pat? Found her. She's found, found her. in the charity shop. 
You found her. I found all my she girls. Was, that you've, <laughs> see, this is, this is what Sharon does. She <laughs> finds people in the charity shop and they're just happily quilting, looking around the charity shop, aren't they? Shopping well, they usually everything. say, why are you buying all these sheets yeah. and backing? I said, I'm going to cut them up. I'm good to make And then before they know it... They're roped into my the, group. You see, we have a lot yeah. in common. <laughs> and they love it. Yeah, they do, don't we they? We meet once a week, we stitch and bitch, and we do. We can yeah. use all those horrible colours you don't want to use. Yes. You use, and you love it, and then yes. you give it away. So. Yeah, absolutely. Great no, fun. That's great. Okay, so we've gone through how you would learn the design, if you like. Yeah. Now, it's interesting that you go from left to right, because we normally teach it from right to left. Not Peter. When he came round, he got me to do everything from the left to the right. I say to people, some people prefer to yeah. do it left to right and some right to left and to yeah. try it and see which yeah. they prefer. Yeah, yeah. So, which is fine. That's it's my fine. Approach. But I think it's, it's something that I haven't mentioned before is that, mm. yeah, you can go the other way. There's other long so, armors I've met. They always say, Sharon, you're doing it wrong. You've got to be up the right. I said, why do I have to be that side? Because you can... Well, the, I tell you, I tell, for those people who are sort of not sure which way they would go, yes, try it. Mm. The reason I prefer going from right to left is I can see more of the pattern. It's not a sudden, you know, it's not so much... What, from right to left? You can yeah, see more of the you pattern. can see all of this pattern that you're coming up to. Why do you want to see it? Well, that, well yeah, right. yes, I, there is Sorry, that Liz, point. That's right. right. <laughs> you're so contrary. Because no, no. <laughs> you don't need to see it. You don't need to see it. Because you are you just, concentrating yeah, really hard on, on what you're doing. just this little bit here. Okay. But yeah. what I do, when I get to the end, I have a little board. Right. Um, like, if this is my end, yeah. I'll have the board there. So you know when to stop. So you know when to stop. Because yeah. often, if you're not concentrating, you're, you're so excited and you're just going off the edge of the I've done, I've done so air have, stitching with pantographs yeah. before now, for sure. So, yeah, you, I, I mark it with this. This is really useful. This Perspex is very good because you can mark it with um, mm. a non-erase you know, marker. So that you can but when it. I first started, I couldn't work out how to go back go from you, you go to a highest point yeah and then i just could, couldn't see it didn't understand it no. so james had to write out oh, i remember idiot now. point one point two point he, he three he made the sharon guide to pantographing Absolutely. and then he? i still couldn't didn't get it so he was working on the old cars and i'd be running in james yeah. i have to change i need another line can you come and show me a heat james is so full patient of oil <laughs> Try not to touch anything, <laughs> telling me what to do. He had it completely in his head. Yeah, he, he I had a clue up. what I was doing. I remember when we demoed it, yeah. I think he came along as well at one yeah. point, and he totally got it. Yeah. And he said, don't worry, I'll show you. And yeah. the lights, remember, remember your laser lights? He altered the light because it was in the wrong position. Yes. Oh, yes, we've adjusted it to it's yeah. on there now. And that yeah. was James. Yeah. OK, um, should we do some stitching then? Yeah. So we'd better start over here then. Do you want to talk about that as a tip, actually? Because we can oh, change the point. Oh, yeah. It is about the positioning of that. Yeah, although this, this is actually That's, in the way a bit. Uh, yeah. But I haven't got that, have I? Yeah, no, you haven't got that. So, so what it is, is that um, normally handy wheels have put a little bar. Um, I, I wonder if I've got one. I haven't got one. Um, puts the bar for the laser light and it sits over here. But the problem with that is as you move forward, what you find is the, the laser light gets knocked by the idler bar. So if you have it on that ordinary position here, it's, it doesn't work so well. Mm -hmm. So what James suggested was there's a, where this bolt goes in, put it in there Hang instead. On, okay. Just, just to point out. Yeah, so it's this hole here. Isn't it? Or is it that one? Or is it the no, wheel no, hole? This, it is, this it is that one. So we normally put, it goes horizontally. Yes. And we put it in here with a washer on the underside and a bolt. On the top uh, side. And a, a, okay, yep, on the top side. Okay. Do you not do one on the bottom as well? Okay. Um, that was a no. Pete was shaking his head. Um, so then you put the nut on the underside. So you kind of have to lift this up to be able to do it. But it is much better than there because you can see as soon as you go here, it just gets knocked. So yeah, use that one instead if you've got a quilting from the back kit on an Amara. Okay. Right. right. Should we should we get quilting then? So where do you want me to start anyway, Liz? Yeah. Um, anywhere you like, really. So we can adjust the laser light. So, I mean... I can't see where it is. No, let, well, let me start I'm, it I'm going to start. I'm going to start there. Okay. Um, no, I'm not, because I can't see Well, I can this. move it. Yeah. I only put that down there just to hold it. Right. If I'm going to start there, yeah. I then have to find... So, I mean, sometimes I actually use... This, this is my start line. Yeah, but this can be moved up. half. There we go. And you can move that around wherever so, you like. 
Let's give him a minute. Okay, no, let's start there. So if I'm starting there, mm -hmm. so that means I need to start there. You're not going to use the solid line? Well, you don't have to, because if you want... You want half. If you want half to get it started, because you often finish God, on That's half. a really good point. Well, that's what I do, because <sighs> it's easier. I love it. This is why Sharon's <laughs> come in today, because we're learning stuff too. Brilliant. Absolutely why brilliant. Why is that line there otherwise? Well, it's there for alignment for the so, next line. But actually, to get started with a half line, that's, yeah. that's perfect. Because you haven't got that. Some of the pantographs have that up there True. to do your half, half line afterwards. Yeah. Well, that's just a nice way of doing it. I love it. OK, great. Thank you. I've learned something okay, today. So, needle <laughs> down. Needle up, just pulling my. Yep. Thread through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And I have already tested the thread and tested the bobbin. And yes. Well, I don't always, but there we go. No. Yeah. But you like to live life on the edge, so. Every time a machine is set up, I know it's in Okay, stop that. Yep, that's the end of the line. And then if I've got any... So that, that is my end of my fabric, basically. Yes. So if I've missed a bit out, which I have, because it's not there, I then just sew along the, um, the selvage and then just go loop. You'd just do that, fill that bit in, in, if the design was... Yeah, absolutely, from a previous line or something that bedded in. Because if that... I yeah. wouldn't, you don't even need to. You wouldn't even need to, because your binding would cover it, it anyway. Yeah. Okay, so shall I pull your thread up and then you just, just do another line, perhaps? Okay. You don't always have somebody over the other side pulling up your thread for you, but nice you yeah, I pop over. Right, and do so it then for I you. go to where I started. Okay. And right, so you're going to hold the thread. Um, like yeah. Because I've done it. So I really go to the, the top. No, actually, no. So for but this no, one. Actually, I've done it. That's okay. You'd, you'd start here. Do that, go up to there, and then continue. You don't have if to move I'd it. Done, if I'd done that one, I would have then moved it. So I don't. I don't. You oh, don't, don't need to move, to move it. it. Yeah, and in fact, you don't, no, if, you, if you're not yeah, careful, you'll yeah. move. You'll miss this bit. So, so I, what I, I would do I is I'd start there. I'd do you, that bit. No, I'd start down the bottom. Actually, yeah, you could off. if if you've that's got enough fabric. Start, yeah. yeah, that's it. I got completely lost. There. That's okay. And somebody else has said, I think it's Anne Archer said in the comments, she does the half line first too. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And I, I feel like that's a big learning thing for me today. Have you? Right. No? That wasn't back to the start where yeah. you started. That's okay. Just, keep, just, that's fine. You just follow the design. Yeah. yeah, it'll be okay. <laughs> Yeah. To relax. Yes. Unclench the teeth because you're like that. <laughs> Arthritic thumbs, this is great because you can just relax. Yes. But it's so easy to just tense up and clench. You know, yes. Just, you should. And get your feet nice and comfortable. Okay. <laughs> and hold your tummy. <laughs>
water is huge, and that's very scary. So I tend to, when I was learning, you can stop at the point. Yes. And then when you've got the, the curve, as you see, I could do that really smoothly. Mm. I mean, stop and pause at the point, move your feet at a yes. point. Yes. Because you've got to keep going You've got to keep moving along. A... Yeah. Stop at the point. Yeah. And then this is a nice curve uh, point. Point. And you're pretty there. much, pretty much there. Yeah. What's that look like? Beautiful. It's very forgiving. It's lovely. So the other key to remember is when you're learning, yes. use a thread that blends in that blends and nobody sees your mistakes. When you feel more confident, you can then use a coloured thread. Yes, and make it show. Yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Well, that, thank you so much. Pleasure. You've taught me today and I love it. <laughs> love it. You have to come back. Show me some more. <laughs> okay. So, Pete, any questions or any comments about that? Um, asks if we're yeah. using cruise. We're not actually, but yeah, oh no, we were just in. Mode. Yeah, no, actually, we were in precision on that one, weren't we? Didn't use it. So, what setting do you normally use? Because I, I have a preferred setting for pantographs. Do you use precision? I have absolutely no, no idea. idea. You set it up. <laughs> I haven't got in mind because you've got to look at the manual on the computer. Well, is that going to happen? No, unless I have a problem. Yeah, so, so it is you whatever come, it is. So whenever you say, Sharon, what have you got that on for? I have no idea what it is. Yeah, so, so what we normally have it on is cruise yeah. with between two, 150 and 250 is what we normally have pantographs at. Is that at. speed? That's, so when, when it pauses in those little points, mm. it continues stitching. Oh, I'm going to be saying that yes. last time you yeah. did my machine. Yeah, yeah. See, I forgot that one. Yeah. So I, well, I didn't set it up for you properly. No, but so you did when you... I did when I came over. So you're telling me your husband didn't set it up for me properly when um, you set it up? Possibly, okay, possibly. Just so we've got a good though, understanding of Yes, this, yeah. absolutely. We, well, we know who to blame. Um, but he did show, give you the opportunity to do right to left and left to right, and I wouldn't have given you that. Mm. So I would have said, Sharon, you need to do right to left and that's it. <laughs> so, you know, it swings and roundabouts. You get best, best of both yeah. worlds. If well, you get I, Pete or I, I, get, I do get the best of both yeah, worlds. <laughs> that's true. Well, it's lovely. It's absolutely brilliant. I, I can't tell you how much uh, I've enjoyed talking with you about your quilts and the quilting and what you do with the charity work. I think it's fantastic. So, I really, um, it's been really good to, to have that and I be able like to share to with ask it. Them to send me in their orphans. Oh, yes. So, if you've got any orphan <laughs> blocks, Send them in or to fabric, here. Or bits, we'll collate bits. them. Any bits, any oh. extra bits of fabric or wadding or anything. Sharon will repurpose anything. You know, some of those, um, the, the stuff that we have left over from the, 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 uh, the classes, yeah. you get those oh, as well, yes. don't you? So, what, all these sample pieces, those are now used for wadding. Yeah. And, and they, it makes a heavier quilt now, yeah. nowadays because. People haven't got the money to heat their houses. To have that heavier quilt on yeah. their beds makes it's a massive actually warmer, difference, isn't it? and it washes beautifully. So, so the other thing that you've done as well is the fiddle quilts, and you made oh, that. Yes. So Sharon made the most amazing fiddle quilt for my dad. And, and oh yes, and yeah, and, and it was wonderful, yeah. absolutely wonderful. So I gave Sharon sort of things that he'd had, tie and yeah. um, some shirts and things like that, and she put it together, and it was brilliant, and he loved it. These are quilts for people with dementia because they they fiddle, they twitch, they're always on the go, attaching. Yeah. So Liz gave me um, his wallet, a tie, a shirt, yeah. his uh, opera gloves. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, some money, lots yeah. of different bits, and we incorporated again. We cut up all oh, this is uh, the, the really nice. You know, I can't do hand This is not, not no good for me. No, don't want no, to do the other side. Yes, no, we can't even do that. No. So I used to cut up the squares so that it's already wadded. Yes. Sew them together and then do the ragged quilts around the edge. That's edges. right. Perfect. Yeah. That's so cutting perfect. cutting the edges where they were joined mm. so it became a ragged quilt that gave it more texture as well. Yeah. And he'd just have it on his lap. And he just, yeah, just play with it. So I took three down to my mum. She's in a nursing home in Portsmouth. And mm. that nursing home's got three now, and they oh. just love them. Yeah. Absolutely love them. Yes, I mean, the the, the dementia mm. nurse on, on his floor, she said how brilliant it was, and she'd yeah. never seen well, we can something like that. So, yeah, no, that yeah. would be great, because there's quite a lot of people there so mm. that, that would appreciate it, I think. Oh, great fun to do. Yeah. They're just so artistic. It's quite, it is, exactly. It's very Once creative. It, yeah, yeah, it's very creative. And one of the girls made, she had just, you know, the padded bras? Yes. She had two of those sewn on. <laughs> and 
don't know if you do. She was like her knee and she was poking it because yes. it was very tactile. And she was saying, titties, titties, <laughs> <for> titties. <laughs> <laughs> it was, she cackled. She, she cackled. cackled with it's that interaction. That's what it's you, about. you want that interaction. Yeah. So, yeah, you want those reactions. Okay. A couple of people asking how you would now advance the quilt and line up the next. Oh, yeah, we should show that, so shouldn't we? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. if you want to, yeah, bring the needle up. I'll, I'll cut it for you. Yeah, I'll do that bit. This is the bit I can remember how to do. <laughs> I just threw me that so I hadn't. Oh. Uh, there we go. Yep. So we'll need to move it on. So, well, let's see how Sharon does it. Well, I slide the machine along. Now, first of all, I then put my needle down. So yeah. You've chosen a point on the I, design. I've chosen the, the highest point, or sometimes pantographs haven't got the highest yeah. points. They've got to write, so you just choose a point. Mm -hmm. Then I put my hand on the design, and that, um, that design is roughly a hand length. So, my, I just go round. You just go round, yeah. I, I'm going to have to come out to show you what I want to say. Yeah, so you're kind of roughly so approximating. The pattern is roughly there. So I roughly put my hand there, and go up, and see if I've got enough space. Ah, I haven't. Right. It's bang, bang. Okay? Got you. So then needle goes up, needle goes down. And then do you need to move it on? Then we need to move on. So this is where I have that painting James. Um, so please off. Yep. So we'll take off the stopper on the front and then you move the hand wheel. So that so then I'm moving uh, that is on the highest point there. Yes. And then looking at my pantograph. Now that is it's moved, but that's so I'm then moving it yeah towards you. Towards me onto the laser is on the highest point of the dash line. Have you got nothing? I think so. That's it. Just there. I see. And then I'll come around. Yes, yeah, so it's on the highest point of the dash yeah. line. Then try to make me up again, keeping the laser on the highest point. Yep. Yeah. Then okay, excuse me. Needle up. Yeah. Then I'm moving the laser across to my dark, my um, black line to where I want to start. Mm -hmm. And I think I start to do that. Yeah, about there. that's right. So this is going to be nicely bedded in. Needle down, needle <clears> up, pull through. Yep, I'll pull that through. Okay, you can go back. So I'm, I'm finishing off. Yep. So it does a tie off can stitch. You check your microphone again. Please. So easy to catch it. Okay, I'm going like that. Does anybody want to ask any questions about that? Are you, are yeah, just okay? check that Sharon's microphone is working. Can everybody hear Sharon now? Can anybody? Yeah. Thanks, Karen. Can you hear Sharon now? Sir, Sharon, say something. Hello, can you Hello? hear me? <laughs> Does anybody want that repeated or me to go through that? No, I think I think that's okay. Should I send them James' cribs sheet if they're not sure? <laughs> yeah. No, it, what's interesting is it's slightly different to how I do it. And, oh, really? um, yeah, but, but what's good is I can see it's a simpler kind of cut down method. I have to have everything simple. Yeah, and I think it works really well. Yeah. So you're good, everybody can hear you now. Okay, do you want to continue and just show okay. stitching out of that third um, line? When you start, make sure you go round, round the correct way because it's yeah. when you're not concentrating, it's so easy to go off it this way and you're actually want to go that way. So you do have to understand which way the pattern's yes, going. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I've got to really think about this. I'm going this way. Oh, one thing before I start, um, with the laser, once I've got to where I want to go, I often go through the pattern just to make sure I haven't made a mistake and yes. I've got the space. Because so there's you're... nothing more annoying if you made a mistake yeah. and you're staying on top of your line. So just to reiterate that, because it's easier for me to show from the front, 
But basically what Sharon's saying is that with the needle up, she would just go along the design and just make sure... You only have to go along about six, yeah, six inches. that's it. You just yeah. have to make sure that it's not going to... If you go on the solid line, it's not, you're not going to hit any of the design you've already stitched. Because um, it's... Yeah, reverse sewing, unpicking. Nobody likes doing it, do they? Razor blade, darling. Razor blade. They're great. Yes. Love it. Yeah. Hence. <laughs> <laughs> Always take care, people, with razor blades. They can be very dangerous. On a white quilt. Possibly. It's lucky you're an ex-nurse, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Can we stop? Yep, that's good. Okay, fantastic. Right, well, thank you so much. Pete, did you want to add anything or shall I just do a wrap up? But um, thank you so much. I yeah. can't tell you how, like I said before, it's just it's been unexpected. brilliant. Unexpected. Yeah, unexpected <laughs> for both of us. But this is what it's about. We're doing improv, absolutely improv. So thank you very much. Anybody who's watching this will do also, we'll uh, put this recording on YouTube as usual and on Facebook. But thank you so much, Sharon, for coming mm. in and for everything you do on the charity side. It's absolutely wonderful to see and love to see your progress well, you, on your feathers as you well. You help as well on the charity. Yes, so thank you. well, I, I do what I can. Mm. But, um, you know, it's just lovely that you've got that level of enthusiasm mm. for producing all these things. And um, we know that they're so, so needed they're and loved. so appreciated, mm. so loved and people treasure them for the rest Ever. of their lives. Yeah, yeah forever absolutely. Course, yeah. yeah. So thank you um, everybody for watching. Um, a special thanks to Lindsay. Thank you for your message. I will give you a call shortly. All right. We look forward to seeing you uh, next week. I will be on, oh, I won't see you next week. I'm afraid I'm away. Um, I've actually, I've got a really lovely thing I'm doing, slightly quilting related. I'm doing a dyeing weekend, D-Y-E-I-N-G. <laughs> <laughs> That's the following week. Um, the dying weekend down in Sussex. So I'm, I'll be leaving early to get down to that. But I, and Pete is in Scotland all week. I'm going to miss Pete. Sad face. Because Pete is away. <laughs> he's going, is he on holiday? He's laughing because he, he, he knows I don't know how to do sad face. <laughs> he's not on holiday, no. How many customers are you seeing next week, Pete? I think. Counting eight up. Eight or nine, I think. Eight, eight or nine in Scotland. So there's a lot of people, and some people he's seeing en route as well. So a really packed um, itinerary for Pete next week. Um, with his engineering cap on, he will be doing lots of servicing and some installations as well. Exciting times. So thank you very much. Love that you love your long arm. And oh, my yeah. best friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, and happy quilting. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.